Hi everyone, welcome to Frappe School. My name is Lynette Sherin and this is the first chapter in our Customer Support Management course. Today, we will be discussing Ticket Management. By the end of this chapter, you will be able to create issue types, create issues or tickets, capture response and resolution details, automate issue creation of receipt of emails. The support module in ERP Next helps you keep a record of all the support requests you receive from clients. This in turn will help all the support agents in your organization offer quick and effective help to the client who needs it. Customers can raise issues or tickets for various product or service related reasons. ERP Next allows us to manage the entire journey of an issue or ticket from being raised by a client to the final resolution. It is important to channel such issue through the right workflows. Issues can arise from different sources like phone calls or emails or even social media. Keeping track of information for each issue and recording it makes sure that all relevant details are accessible easily so that they can be resolved faster. There can also be situations where certain issues cannot be solved by support agents or support engineers and might need the involvement of other engineers and accountants. In such cases, separate tasks need to be created. We can even analyze issues and identify patterns so that overall changes can be made in products and services thus improving the overall customer experience. We can automate certain tasks like assigning tickets to right support agents, auto-closing tickets after a certain period of inactivity, etc. Let's see how ERP Next helps to streamline customer support. Let's first see how we can create an issue type. To open the issue type list, navigate from home to the support module and go to issues section. Here, we can see any issue types already created and add a new one by clicking on add issue type button here. When we open the document, we can first name this issue type and then add a description. For example, let's name this goods delivery and add the description as all issues raised by customers related to delivery of goods. Once done, we can save this issue type. Now, Let's move on to recording an issue in our system. We can find the issue list under the issue section in the support module. When we open a new issue document, we can see that we will first have to define a subject for that issue. Let's write delay in delivery of goods as the subject. Next, we can pick the priority of this issue. Let's set it as medium. Then we will add customer details and select the issue type we just created. Lastly, in this section, we can add the email of the person who has raised this issue. For example, if the customer we selected has raised the issue, in the details section, we can add any details and the description of the issue raised. The response details section records details about when this issue was first responded to. When a support team member responds to this issue, the date and time are recorded here. The resolution details section shows the opening and closing dates and times for this issue. Since this issue status is still open, it will only show the opening date and time. We can even add resolution details here. 
when we mark the issue as closed or resolved. In the reference section, we can tag a lead, project and add contact details for reference. We can even add an email account here. The VIA customer portal checkbox indicates if the issue was created through the web portal. When we've added all these details, we can save the issue. Once we save the issue, we can assign it to a particular user using the assign feature in the sidebar on the left. This will send a message to the user as well once we tag their email ID. This issue will pass through different stages and its status can keep changing. Let's have a look at some different statuses. As we see here, the status is set to open right now. If a reply has been sent for this issue, the status will be replied. If this issue is on hold for any reason, the status can be set to on hold. If support executives have resolved this issue, the issue will be marked as resolved. If the resolution of the issue is confirmed by the relevant party, then we can mark it as closed. We can do it manually or we can automate this via close issue after days configuration in support settings. When we scroll down to the end of the issue, we can see a new email button. We can use this button to respond to the issue. An email will be sent out to the person who raised the issue and we can add a subject, message and send the email. If some action needs to be taken regarding this issue, we can even create a task linked to it. We can go to the create button and open task from there. This will open a task doc type with the issue details added. We can add other details about the task that needs to be done. And then save it. If we mark the issue as resolved in the status field and then save the changes, the closing date and time will show in the resolution details section. Similarly, if we change the status to close and save it, the time is recorded in the resolution details section. We can even reopen this issue after we have closed it if there are any developments with this progress. We can even set up the system to automatically create an issue based on emails received using the append feature in email accounts. To do this, we will need to navigate from home to the settings and go to email account. Here, we can see a list of email accounts added. Suppose we want to enable incoming emails for the support email account. We can open it and scroll down to the incoming settings and select the enable incoming checkbox. In the document linking section, we can link the issue doc type in the append to field. Now, Whenever someone sends an email to the support email of the organization, an issue will be automatically created from it. We can also enable contact creation from incoming emails and automatic linking in documents using the checkboxes here. If we want to be notified if the email is not replied to, we can select the notify if unreplied checkbox. Once we have configured the auto creation of issues from incoming emails details, we can save these changes to the email account. This brings us to the end of the first chapter in our customer support management course. I hope this chapter helped you understand how to set up issue types, how to create an issue and how to customize other features related to issues in the support module. 
You can read more about ERP Next on docs.erpnext.com. In the next chapter, we will explore service level agreements. Thank you.